Welcome, my friends, to this week's reflection as we continue to think about what the new normal might look like. Who might we be as church when we re-enter these buildings? We are moving into yet another week of this global pandemic. And personally, it has started to feel very real that we're not at all sure what the next few months and years will look like and I appreciate that that is unsettling. Our faith has much to teach us, and part of this means using our God-given minds to ask questions and explore where God might be leading us. This week, we ask, what does it mean to be a church that lives together in diversity? And we're encouraged to explore 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to to, uh, 26, which Doreen is going to read for us now. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 26. A reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 26, concerning unity and diversity in the body. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, But all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptised by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now if the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, Those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and the parts that we think are less honourable we treat with special honour, and the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honour to the parts that lacked it, so there should be no division in the body but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Amen. This passage comes just before the really well-known chapter 13, so often chosen by couples for their wedding. No doubt, because it's all about love. When I preach on this text at weddings in this beautiful space, I always wonder what terrible things must have happened in Corinth to necessitate Paul's letter. What were they up to? Well, we get some clues from Paul's words. This early church community seems to be struggling with noisy, clanging, competitive voices and a lack of patience and kindness. They were displaying the very human traits of being envious, boastful, arrogant, rude, irritable and resentful with each other, which most of us display sometimes. 
but perhaps they were getting a reputation for being these things most of the time. In context, it was so easy for these behaviours to fester as this small Christian community struggled to find its place and as they coped with being abused for their faith. Paul needed to remind them that we are nothing if we have no love, even under such... Un Paul needed to remind them that we are nothing if we have no love, even under such circumstances. And the same process of thinking is true for today's earlier verses in chapter 15. We can ask, what was going on that demanded Paul write these words? For in the Spirit we were baptised into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we all drink of the same Spirit. Clearly, they were having trouble accepting that all are welcome into Christ's church, Jews and Greeks, slaves and free. This was new for this, this new community. These followers of Christ were not to be a holy huddle made up of those who are in and those who are out. Jesus shows us that all are welcome. And not only are all welcome, but everyone is needed and necessary. Each of us are indispensable to the body of Christ. We are all capable of being his hands and feet in the world. It seems that the church in Corinth was trying to tie itself in knots, debating who could be part of their community. When I think about debates, I think of university debating societies taking opposing views and trying to persuade the other that their view is right. I'm really not convinced by how healthy this is. We've seen a lot of debates in Parliament in recent years and it's so combative and it feels a bit childish. Debating something can reduce it to black and white, this or that. And I think we know that that's not what life is like. It seems that the church in Corinth was debating who is in and who is out. They were struggling to live with diversity. Unfortunately, despite Paul's letter, the global church has gone on with the debating ever since. Who will we welcome as part of our community? When someone new, maybe someone very different to you, walks into our buildings, do we find ourselves in a debate? I have no doubt that the initial welcome would be warm and friendly, no matter who it is. Even a slight sense of excitement that someone new has come to church. Quick, get them on a rotor so that they, they can't leave. Does maybe an internal or, or quiet group debate begin? Yeah, but their, their hygiene leaves a lot to be desired. How should we handle it? They've only just arrived and they want to take over the flowers. Perhaps they should go somewhere else. I don't mind that she's transgender, but what do we tell the children? Is not part of the truth that we like our little group as it is. We understand it and know those unwritten rules that we challenged last week. Having to get used to someone different, who is a bit different, maybe, is a bit of a pain. 
It's unsettling. I wonder if there's that slight rolling of the eyes that says, yes, I'll welcome anyone, but I'm fed up of hearing of their poverty, about their sexuality, their immigration status, their different political views, their different understanding of what church should be, of what my church should be. It's fine as it is. Perhaps we do that with those who are already part of our church families. I think Paul was astute to recognise irritability, rudeness, the loud voices and a lack of patience within the church. If we're honest, doesn't this happen whenever you get groups of people together? Perhaps even our families, offices, schools and yes, churches. Especially at the moment, aren't we struggling just a little to accept that different people behave differently in isolation and during a global trauma? As we grow into the new normal, it is good for our church families, both here and here, to ask, what does God want our churches to be like? Does God call us to be a place where we debate who is welcome? A place where we try to persuade each other to live as we live? Or does God call us to be a place that starts with welcome, tries to put itself in the shoes of the other, a place where we celebrate how wonderfully and colourfully diverse we all are? Life would be boring if we were all the same, my dad often says. And I respond, yes, but it would be easier Paul was encouraging and teaching the church how to be a body of different parts, each one vital and important, for this is what God's kingdom is like. I wonder if this time of social distancing and lockdown has taught us something. Unfortunately, I think it has shown us that there are people we have been valuing more than others in our society, whilst overlooking many. Clapping for the NHS and key workers is a wonderful way to bring our communities together in doing something positive and life-affirming, but does it really do anything to show them we value them every day? Some nurses and doctors have come out publicly and said, please don't just clap for us fund the NHS properly. I rejoiced at the sudden and immediate ability of government to find the funds to house the homeless during lockdown. I am now angered to discover that funding is quietly disappearing and our society seems comfortable again with our brothers and sisters being without a home. If this is returning to normal, I don't want it. Is it true that if one member suffers, all suffer together? That's what Paul says. We've been told this at the moment. Everyone is suffering equally during the pandemic. Are we not seeing that this is a lie told by clanging voices with a lack of love? The truth is that injustice Poverty and discrimination in all its forms means that some have taken the brunt of the crisis and that we don't experience it in the same way and equally. Might we do better as a nation and as church to live in such a way that every part of the body is valued, every member of our churches? Christ calls us to accept love and value our differences, to put ourselves in each other's shoes and to walk a mile 
even in the most uncomfortable shoes that we would find hard to put on. And as we return to these beautiful buildings in whatever form that may be, I pray that we may be a symbol to our broken communities of a different way of living, Christ's way, where each is valued and made welcome. And I pray that you may know that too. You are welcome and of value. There is a lot more to explore in this theme, so I'm looking forward to our discussion group uh, Friday at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. We've now agreed to record these and to share them on YouTube and by DVD so that we can, as far as possible, all be part of the discussion. Your thoughts are valued. Continue to look out for the various Zoom coffee mornings, both South Croydon and St Paul's, the WhatsApp conversations that are ongoing and written material being posted around. <coughs> Look out for the various Zoom coffee mornings, WhatsApp conversations, written material that's being posted out. And we look forward to next Sunday when we'll be celebrating Pentecost together. As I said last week, we are still Christ's church. We are all welcome. Please know that all you are doing and all you are being is of value to our two churches. Thank you for being you. Every blessing. Until next week. Yeah.